everyone, Linda here. I wanted to talk about making mandalas for self-awareness, but also relaxation and stress relief. Um, and I just have a really simple technique. Let me switch, I'll switch the screen so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Um, so here I've got, I'm gonna just, it's a mandala practice is really simple. You draw a circle and you paint or draw in it um, and let it kind of become whatever it wants to become. And then I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that you can read it for yourself. Um, and when you've, when you've created your mandala, if you wanna share it in the group, feel free and we can talk about it. If you'd like to share it privately with me, I have a portfolio review session that's available on my website. If you go to artsyapothecary.com slash readings, you can find, um, you can schedule a time with me to look at your mandala when you're done and, and get some more insights into it. So I'm just gonna get right into it. So mandala is basically just a circle, right? <laughs> so the, the psychologist, um, Carl Jung, he created mandalas like every day. And he would, he had a journaling practice where he used the circle, basic circle, and he said that the, the circle kind of represents the whole self, right? So however we draw or doodle in it, um, we can look at that as aspects of the self, which is really interesting. So I like to do just a quick centering um, whenever I do any um, intuitive work or, or some, some journaling and things like that. And you can do it however you want. You probably have something in your own practice that works for you. I like to just either put my hand across my chest or do like the prayer mudra and just feel, take a few deep breaths and feel into that heart space. So I'm creating from my heart space, connecting it to the mind. And when we slow our breathing too, it really sends a signal to our bodies that we're ready to just receive and relax. So a couple deep breaths. And you can pause the recording and take as long as you need um, to get into that, that creative space for yourself. So here's my drawing and me switch it over so you can just see a little bit clearer view. There we go. Okay, so here's our circle. And so I just made a circle and you can draw in the circle, outside the circle, it doesn't really matter. Sometimes I like to start in the center with my pen or pencil and close my eyes. Take a deep breath and just kind of allow my hand to move however it wants to. I can think about how I'm feeling today and what that movement might look like. Maybe And then I like to then try to bring it back to center. Okay, so the first thing you can look at is your little doodle here, right? <laughs> so one, one of the things that I noticed is that it's pretty well contained within the circle. Some days I'm all over the place and I'm out. I'm feeling pretty centered and pretty um, grounded today. So that's showing up in my drawing. So that's one thing I can know. And you can write this like around your mandala. You can use anything. It's got the feeling to me of um, like, there's this feeling of like flower petals. So there's a little bit of blooming going on. It also, um, for some reason, reminds me of an egg. Like it looks like, like, a, like a chicken egg or a duck egg or something where it would be like a raw egg where it's got the the yolk in the center and the outside. So I'm kind of feeling like that. I see kind of like a face, maybe this is the, the mouth part here and that. So those are just a few things that I'm noting that I 
might write down grounded egg, you know, those kinds of things, flower. And then um, I can look at it too. If I were to draw a line across the middle right here, that line would be like, I call it the line of awareness. So what's ever above that line and shows up in the mandala above that line would be things that I'm currently aware of. So whatever symbols, and as I evolve the drawing, you know, it'll be more and more developed. Whatever's above that line are things that I'm already aware of. And what's below the line are things that are coming into my awareness. And then if you do left and right, this side of the mandala could represent things that are more um, linear and practical, right? It's kind of like the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So if you're, so, you know, they say that the, the left side of the brain controls the right side. So if you're drawing on the right side, um, that's going to be that more linear. And then the right side of the brain, the left side of your body, you're drawing on this side, that's going to be more intuitive and um, nonlinear. So it's like more practical, this is more intuitive and, and flowing and nonlinear. So now I'm going to, um, so that is actually enough to give you some insights, but I also want to kind of go in with some paint and add some color to it. So I'm just going to take a paint color and maybe just block in some, you can do this with crayons or whatever, it doesn't really, there's no rule, I mean, you know, do it with coffee grounds if you want to, it doesn't really matter. You're going to get, so here's where, like the relaxation stress relief. So using something like an oil pastel or paint is nice when you're looking for something to kind of soothe your mood because it's very flowing. Colors can be very vibrant. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for something to really get focused in, if you feel very scattered and you want to use something that's to focus you in, maybe a crayon or colored pencil might serve that need. But I love paint because I can be rather impatient <laughs> and paint covers very quickly and easily. So I'm just filling in, you know, I'm just wherever it's, it feels like the, this big shape here. I want it to kind of in there. And so, so one of the things I'm noting for myself is I could use the same color in that space, but I kind of want to go with a slightly different one. So I'm just going to grab this. And I'm just, I'm not really thinking too much about the colors right now. I'm just grabbing. So, and, I, and I'm, my mind, I have a very analytical mind. I love to think about the meanings of things, but I'm really doing, you know, I practice doing my best of like suspending judgment till the end. So that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just suspending judgment. And I, what's going on in my mind right now is I'm replacing thoughts of, oh, it should be this way or, oh, um, that means this, like those thoughts come in. And as they come in, I just lovingly redirect and say, okay, well, we'll think about that in a little bit. It's like a child that, you know, wants your attention and you really need to take care of some responsibility or something like that. You just, the ego or whatever that part of the brain, that analytical part that wants to categorize and, and whatnot. It just wants, it wants attention. So just say, oh, okay, I hear you all. I'll be back later. Right now I'm just going to have fun picking a color and putting the colors on. And it's just, that's what we're doing right now. And so I'm just picking some colors and putting it wherever. And I kind of just work with the color until I'm bored with it. I don't really, you know, say it needs to be so many. I don't really create too many. Sometimes I'll create kind of a, um, 
a rule structure or pattern in the artwork where I'll say like, oh, these, um, you know, kind of like what I did here, like, oh, everything that's connected this in this open shape is going to be this color. There's simple little rules or patterns or whatever that just, they feel satisfying, so whatever. Um, yeah, so the pink is kind of done for me. Go into this yellow, and I'm really loving. So I'm noticing, like, oh, I really love this yellow color. And it's funny because I don't usually really enjoy yellow very much, but today I do. Today, yellow is a good color. So I'm going to go through and fill in these shapes, and I'm probably going to um take this and edit it and fast forward through all of this little painting stuff so feeling like it's it's complete and I know when it feels complete when it's like I'm um, I don't know like in during the the uh, beginning stages there's kind of an energy of like oh okay this is exciting this is exciting and now I'm just kind of shifty, like I can feel it kind of moving. So you can kind of just feel that um, with any like, like, okay, this part's done. Um, so I've kind of blocked in some things um, and I've just let it evolve into whatever it's going to be. Um, and now I can add to it and I just, I feel like I want to put these triangles here and I'm not really overthinking it. I'm just like, if I have the impulse to do it, I just feel like I want to add some little, little details. Um, that would be kind of fun. And it's such a good, these, these little mandalas and little, little like journal paintings. Um, there's such a nice practice to just kind of let it go, let yourself try things and, and not worry too much about it. I mean, it's a new journal. It doesn't, it doesn't really have to be seen by anybody. It's, um, you want to try making little squiggly lines like this and try making little squiggly lines. What's the worst that can happen, right? Is worst that can happen is you don't like what you created and then so you paint over it or throw it away or something. I mean, I don't recommend throwing your artwork away, but um, if that's part of your process, whatever, you know. And so that's the journal and these mandalas. It's a nice contained area. It's something that you can just kind of play with. Um, Yeah, so I'm just kind of feeling these, this repeating pattern. And it'll come up like with your work, you'll feel like, oh, is it overworked? Is it all those things that it's just programming? It's just, just voices, so just noise. So it's kind of like, you know, have like the annoying person that says stupid stuff. They just say ignorant stuff and it's not really worth engaging. So you're just like, okay, that's kind of what happens. And you know, that's what your little critics in your head do. They just say ignorant stuff. They don't know. And, and, and you know, your, your creativity critics in your head, they just they don't really know any better and you can't convince them. So might as well just enjoy yourself. 
and have fun with it. So I'm just so at this point I'm just kind of adding some of the little details. Come in with a smaller paintbrush and just kind of getting it finished up. Um, okay, so then at some point I want to kind of just like step back. So I got so it's interesting. So I got like really into the little details, and now I want to just kind of step back and take it in as a whole. And you can like prop it up um, somewhere and and uh, take take a literal step back, or you can do it. It's kind of nice for me. I'm doing it on a screen. If you have the ability to record yourself painting, it's, I have to tell you, since I've been recording my paintings, it's a whole level of insights that I'm gaining from being able to watch my process in a, in a time lapse kind of setting. So, and also to, you know, when something's up on a screen, so taking a photograph and then looking at it from in a different way, really is, it's a pretty amazing, um, it's pretty amazing new perspective. So just from looking at it, I feel like I kind of want to um, just kind of create like a, a border. Like I don't, I don't have a right word for it. Um, closure, maybe. I want to create some sort of boundary or, yeah, boundary. I think that's the right word that's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna create this kind of this boundary here, maybe up here too. Maybe here, a little there. And again, it's artists are meant to be fun and insightful and relaxing. If you're stressing about it, then you may not be creating art, you may be creating craft or someone else's idea. You might be holding yourself to someone else's standards. So be aware of that. When I get stressed about creating something, and I do a lot of work for other people, like I create in the place of other people. So um, when I first started doing portraits and and commissioned artwork, I used to freak out. Every once in a while I get stressed about it too because you're creating something for someone and you want it to, you want them to love it, right? So um, you get all these ideas, but you can't possibly know what is going to make somebody else happy. So when that comes up for you, even if you're creating in your journal and you know no one's going to see it, that's still that little voice can come in there, what will people think? You can't possibly know all the factors that go into someone's perspective on any given day, given day. And I've many times have seen people take a look at artwork that I've created and one day they're like, wow, that's really amazing and blah, blah, blah. And one day they're like, well, oh, um, maybe you should have done this or should have done that. And it's just, we see our artwork differently every time we come to it so um, it's that's not something you can control so you can't really control how other people are going to respond to you or your art anyway so you might as well just do what feels right for you and that's what i do with portraits now is not that i'm not considering the person i'm painting for but i've learned that when I listen to my own guidance and my own heart guidance, it's totally in tune with the highest good for all. Because I want people to feel good when they look at my art. And the way that I do that is by doing what makes me feel good. Where a lot of times, have you ever found yourself maybe giving someone advice and then realizing that it's exactly what you needed to hear for yourself too? It's just like that. So those are the ways that I kind of talk myself out of worrying about what other people think. And I'm feeling like one more 
kind of happy little layer. That's what I just heard. Thank you, Bob Ross. One more happy little layer. Or two. No, it's two. It's like expanding. Okay, so I'm going to actually start the analysis process while I'm finishing this one last layer. Because um, what's first coming to me, so you, so you want to first take a look at your, your, okay. Let's get this started on the screen. So you can see. All right, so the first thing you want to do is look at your um, artwork as a whole, as the whole thing. So you take, you step back a little bit and you take a look. And what I'm noticing is that um, the mandala that I just created has this kind of, it's radiating out. And then I noticed that I, I focused in on that heart in the center. So it really, so what it's saying to me primarily is about like heart centeredness. But I also, with the set, so that's the, that's my interpretation of like the whole, right? So you look at the whole first, like the whole thing. And then the next thing I do is I notice what draws my attention. And what's really drawing my attention are these lines. They remind me of like an old phone cord. We used to have a cord and it was like a big deal because we got one that was like freaking 20 feet long, I don't know, it was probably six feet long, and we could take, I could take it from our kitchen, like, into the living room and, like, in a corner to talk to my friends, <laughs> it's a really big deal, but that's what that reminds me of, is, like, this, this phone cord, and so it's saying, like, communication to me, um, and so if we look again at that line of awareness, it almost it has this mirror effect, so there's a there's an aspect of communication that I'm aware of, like very aware of, because it's right at the top. And there's an aspect of communication that I'm not aware of, but they almost mirror each other. So that could be, you know, and so if the first, so if the, the global or the, the total um, big picture view is something about heart awareness and this radiating out this energy, um, like our, our electromagnet in our heart center is, extending out, I think there's something about communication that this is telling me um, that has kind of this above and below or this within without kind of thing going on. So as I communicate in ways that I'm aware of, it's also reflected and in, in being communicated out in ways that I'm not fully aware of yet. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm, so that's the, that's the first thing that drew my attention was those. And then I go on to the next thing that's kind of drawing my attention. And I keep looking over at these triangles. So they almost look like a written language to me. Like it's like, um, like some sort of glyphs or something. But I'm also drawn to this triangle-ish shape here that's touching on this like seed shape that's connected to here. So I'm kind of drawing some attention. So I'd be writing this down rather than speaking it out loud. So I like, you know, that I'd be writing like, oh, there's four triangles. There's a larger triangle, it's connected to the seed. And then I kind of look, I put some dots here. So I always like to look at numbers too. So I'll add up, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dots. So, when I think of the number nine, I think of like spiritual connection. I think of spirituality. I'm not a numerologist. I can't remember what all the numbers mean, but I remember that nine means spirituality to me in my language. It might not in numerology. I'm not sure, but I might have gotten that from there too. But in my mind, and that's what's important. So um, it's awesome. So fill your head with lots of knowledge of symbolism. But then if you remember, it's like everybody's got a different definition of what the color red means to them, right? So it could be passion, it could be anger, it could, it could be love, it could be um, mortality, it could, it could be so many different things. So make sure you're clear about your own definition. So for me, I see the number nine in the dots around there. So I think, okay, um, spirituality or spiritual path or something like that. And then I see these four triangles. Well, the triangles for me, and from what I've learned in through, and if you've done the shapes activity with me, um, I've learned that the triangles often represent like our visions and dreams and those kinds of things. So when I see that, I go, oh, it's related to my life path or my 
um, personal mission or my dreams and visions for what I want. So there's a tie between the nine spirituality, and then it, I like how it comes up in lots of different colors. I'll get to all the colors in a second. But if I drew this line again, um, we're looking at three of them, three of these aspects, if we call them facets of, of, you know, if all those are facets of this vision, dream, or whatever, three of them are already in my awareness. And then there's one more that's coming into the awareness. So it's close to that line, but not quite there yet. And there's like this dark spot there. So I'd probably note that dark little thing. So maybe like what, so you, here's where you kind of use your imagination and go, oh, this is interesting. It almost looks like these are like petals of a flower and one was plucked, but it's down here. So maybe it, you know, what would happen if I moved it? And you can kind of play with those ideas. And then looking too, this is on, it's heavy on the intuitive side, which makes sense because like my life path is related to that intuitive side. Um, and so I can look at that too. There's lots going on, all this intuitive side. And so what's interesting is this phone cord shape, it almost goes through these triangle petal things. So that's somehow like the connection, that communication, maybe that's my communication to the divine. Um, and here's something else that's reflecting that spirally phone cord thing is kind of coming into my awareness. It's not, it's, it's very, very subtle. That green, um, orange is a very, even though they're complementary colors, they're in the same value. So that could indicate something when you do. So you look at not just the colors, but also the value of the colors. So value means how light or dark something is. So I've got the, the orange and the green are not lighter or darker than one another. Maybe the green's slightly lighter, but so close that when they're next to each other, you can almost not see them or not see the difference. So I can use that as a metaphor for something that's coming into my awareness. And I can be aware now of what might be coming into my awareness that has such a subtle change that I might overlook it right, that's relating to this communication with the divine, or communication in general, with my heart center, right, um, a couple more things, and then that's on my practical side, so if I did it, you know, that's on my, my practical linear, so it's something relating to, um, where this is relating to my intuition, and the non-linear, my creativity, um, more of my feminine aspects of, of, um, of how we, feminine energy type stuff. This is more masculine energy type stuff. It'll be more about action and um, practicality and linear kind of stuff. Um, sort of Bible, that kind of stuff. And this looks like a bread. <laughs> it looks like loaf bread to me. Um, so there may be something, or like even like a seed or a pill or something like that. So there's something coming up. And I am dealing with some ish, some not issues, some um, growth and learning in my understanding of nutrition and, and taking care of my physical body. So that might be related to that too. So these are all things that, I, that this little scribble is giving me tons and tons and tons of information. Um, and then I wanted to say what, like around here, so, so if your drawing goes outside the circle, the circle, if it represents you, then the stuff outside the circle represents your environment or what's going on around you, right? So um, I find it really interesting that I created like this, I was talking about boundaries and barriers and um, I've always been resistant to the idea of boundaries. Like when I worked in a inpatient behavioral health and I got reprimanded because someone hugged me because they were so happy with um, the artwork that they were able to work through that they were emotional and they hugged me and in that clinical setting that's not acceptable behavior you can't hug patients like you can't touch patients and that's and I understand why and um, but I always felt like touch is such a human thing and I could never understand that and I've and I've always had boundary things because I'm, I'm an empath and I just I can't help myself. I just love people. <laughs> and so, but there's a swing back. So maybe I'm looking at, so what this might be telling me is like, 
as I'm trying to learn to have more healthy boundaries for me, they might still be a little spiky. They might be in some areas um, where I'm overcompensating. Like, so that, that's kind of what that's saying is like, in some areas you might be a little like overcompensating to keep yourself, like protect yourself. And I think that too is um, because, so here's like tons of information, <laughs> but um, so this is interesting too, because I was talking about like the nutrition stuff and whatever. And one of the things is like my body's starting to drop weight like really quickly because I've let go of some of the need to have this layer of physical body to kind of protect me um and it feels like i have so it could be too like i have these feelers out and i'm not quite sure how to feel comfortable in that so that's kind of i think what's that's telling me a little bit but then what i really like about what's happening around the like this circle that represents me and my being um this could be represented as your energy field too um so there's there's lots of ways for energy and information to still get in and it's radiating out. It's not like it's closed off or anything like that. So looking at your mandala, if you have something that's coming out, creating a big bubble, look at like where the bubble is. Um, and that could represent some sort of kind of, we can have like bubbles in our energy field too. Um, so that can kind of give you some information about that. If you were going to look at this as a physical body, um, like if you wanted to look at your energy system, you could look at this in a couple ways. So you could kind of draw in your mind um, that whole, that like, what was I called this? I kept wanting to call it the Ves Vesuvius man, but it's not the Vitruvian man. So like the guy in the circle, right? So it'd be like head here, arms out here, left and right arms, legs down that right. I mean, you could look at where things show up on the body. You can also look at it in um like if you were to do like a, a a yin yang over the circle and then imagine that both halves were a fetus so it would be two halves of yourself so you could imagine the head one head is here one head is here and then the the spine goes along the edges and you can kind of line those things up with what's showing up in your drawing. So there's lots of ways to get information from a really simple and relaxing um, drawing. And I totally recommend, if, you know, starting out, if you want to develop a creative practice, um, like a visual journaling practice, I recommend starting with the mandala. And then over time, comparing the different mandalas as you go through is really, it's very, very enlightening. You'll find lots and lots of information. Um, one of the things I just noticed too, looking in the big pictures, I've kind of got like this shell going too, which is telling me like growth and, and things too. So it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, so that's my process of using a mandala for insights and inspiration and relaxation and stress relief. Um, I'd love to see what you create. Feel free to share in the group anytime. Um, it doesn't have to be right over this video. It doesn't have to be in the post. Just Anytime you feel like sharing anything that you've created, feel free to share. Um, let's support one another. So when you see other people sharing, um, leave them an encouraging comment. And I'll go through and, and leave you as much feedback as I can. If you'd like, again, if you'd like to work one-on-one -on -one with me and share your artwork with me, and we'll sit down together and I'll help you analyze it and get the most out of it, feel free to schedule an appointment with me. Um, you can go to artsypothecary.com. There's a section for readings, and in the section for readings, um, you select more services or individual coaching, and it'll say portfolio review. So that's what you're looking for is a portfolio review, and I will spend 45 minutes with you talking and getting deep into what your art is telling you. So yeah, I hope you try it and have a good time, and um, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Have a great day. Bye-bye.